he's a different type of person because he's always seeing how he can help you, how he can help others. He's not greedy. He, he loves my mom. At age 21, I, I started getting this headache, you know, but I didn't think about it too much. I started seeing like bruises as well. When the doctor came in, that hey, we're testing for acute myeloid leukemia. So it was definitely like um, something I wasn't ready for, but gratefully, you know, my mother was there. I didn't leave the hospital for a month actually. When I first met Jesus, we didn't have a lot of the information about his specific type of leukemia, but we knew it needed intensive chemotherapy. As time developed and we kind of gathered information, we basically knew he had a higher risk type of leukemia and that with standard therapies that don't include transplant, it would have, the leukemia would have eventually taken his life without doubt. He got really, really skinny. It was hard for him to walk. They would tell him you have to walk around the hospital. So he had to be very, very strong. And you do think about him, what if something bad happens, you know? It's always in the back of your mind. So she never left his side till he was okay. Always next to him, always next to him. So then the next step is, well, if he needs a transplant, then where are we gonna find a donor? Unfortunately, in Hispanics and African-Americans, the chances of those patients having either a brother or a sister, that's a match. And even more importantly, in what we call the matched donor pool, so these are adults who have agreed to be donors, is very low. What ended up happening was Dr. Hagen was suggesting an umbilical cord. And so frequently in those patients, in Jesus' situation, we use umbilical cord as our donor source because we can get away with less matching, essentially. This is literally cells that come from the umbilical cord when a baby is delivered that mom and dad decide to donate. Once we identified a cord blood that matched Jesus, he agreed to be on the study, at which point, thankfully, he was randomized to receive the cord blood expansion. So his cells were sent to the Gamita cell factory or the lab where these cells were then grown and shipped back to us at Loyola. This is a technology now where we can kind of grow those cells in the lab so we have more of them and that leads to a transplant with less complications. Good. So, you know, I think we're good. You know, we'll continue kind of to see each other every three months and kind of moving forward. And it was a gift. We'll you know, it was a very big gift. It's been a, almost three years now in June. I'm pretty grateful, you know, that, that you know, that baby, you know, whose ever baby that was, you know, was born and everything. Jesus is a great, success story in terms of our ability to treat his cancer and put him in a good place for a long, healthy life. And one thing I talk to Jesus about and try to work in the communities is, you know, getting the word out about our need for more donors, particularly in these minority communities. Being involved in clinical trials and our ability to do that here at Loyola is what leads to these improved outcomes. And it's really allowed us to be a big contributor to the advancement of the field and the treatment of leukemia and lymphoma.